In today's video, we're going to talk about your post-practice maintenance routine. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. As you can see in the time-lapse video right here, I just finished a 40-minute practice routine on my 2018 Peter Henderson Heritage Pipes here, and I wanted to discuss with everybody what steps I take after a playing session to keep my bagpipes in their best shape. What do I do after I practice? So the first thing I do is actually take my moose valve and I empty it ugh, out. There's a towel down there, don't worry. And then I take a small brush and I brush out my blowpipe. Now I have a Reed Wrangler mouthpiece on here, and if you want to learn more about the Reed Wrangler, you can find more about that in the video there, but it won't go all the way through. So when I'm done here, I'm actually going to take this to the sink and actually rinse out the mouthpiece because I can't quite get a brush through there, but I want to get as much moisture out of here as I can. And with all of this, it's not about making anything bone dry with these brushes. It's more about breaking up any large moisture like droplets into kind of a film that will evaporate more quickly. If you have a flapper at the end of your blowpipe, you'd probably want to go in from the top and carefully go down past the flapper and back out, but be careful around that flapper. Don't mess it up, don't bend it, don't do anything that might keep it from sealing. I, however, have that moose valve, and you saw that moisture a minute ago. Now that that's been dried out, I actually like taking my moose valve out with the little moose tool that comes with here and keeping it rinsed off and clean. As you can see here, while it's a little damp, it's in quite good overall repair and cleanliness because I just rinsed this out under a sink. I used to leave it in here for extended periods of time. It'd get kind of gross and I'd have to soak it in peroxide or other things to keep it clean. I found since I've been rinsing it out under a sink that it stays pretty clean. I haven't had to disassemble it and yeah, it doesn't smell weird or anything. So uh, I rinse out my moose valve regularly. You want to do the same. You don't want things growing in there. And now that my moose valve is out of the blowpipe stock, I go ahead and take a brush and again, try to break up any large moisture droplets. And if needed, you can grab a towel and wipe down any extra moisture that might be on the top of the stock here. Then I move on to the chanter. I take this out, and this is gonna tell me a lot actually about what the rest of everything's going to look like. So I carefully take this out and I look, and if you can see, there's a fine bit of misty film on the top. I just kind of carefully wipe that off with my towel. And then before I put this down, I take my cap, whatever kind of cap you have, put it on and secure it. You don't want the reed getting damaged while you're doing anything else. So cap this reed as soon as you're done. You'll thank me for it. So again, now I'm gonna grab my large brush. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick it in the chanter stock and make sure it's dry. And there's a little moisture on the bottom. Take my towel, just wipe that down. Okay, that's all looking great. Moving on to the drones. I'm going to check my outside tenor first. Now, I normally have these on a table laying out on a towel. Standing up doing this is a little awkward, but it's where the camera is right now, so I'm going to go with it. Take it out. Take a look. And the reed looks pretty dry, but if I reach in, I can definitely feel a little moisture inside that stock. So, again, take my large brush. If you have a valve or something in there, be careful. Maybe not poke it in too far. I don't have any valves, so I can just go ahead and put it all the way in and out. And then I'm going to take the reed out carefully, and I'm going to stare down this and look and see if there's any moisture at all. And what I'm seeing right now is that nothing made it through the reed. In fact, nothing even really made it onto the reed. The reed is dry to touch. I don't even have any moisture that I see that's really built up around the bottom of the, the reed seat here after 40 minutes, but that's me. What if yours is wet? That's where it's nice to have a variety of different size brushes. And there's a link below to where you can purchase some brushes like these, but they're available from pretty much any bagpipe retailer. You want the soft, floofy ones. There's also swabs on the market, but to be honest, I've never really had much luck with them. They tend to get stuck in, they're very tight. I, I just like brushes, they work fine for me. So if there is moisture, just take the reed out, take the small brush, run it in and out. And then you could take your medium or large brush, depending on the bore size, and insert it into the top and get that dry as well. Again, mine are dry, so I don't need to do that. But the stocks definitely have some moisture in them, so I'm gonna dry each stock out. This one's happening off camera, I couldn't hold it up. And carefully back in. Now, if I was coming home from a band practice or an event, I would go ahead, leave this all together when I put it in my case. It'll be fine for a little bit, but when I get home, and I am home, I'm actually gonna lay these out on a table, again, on a towel, something soft, don't scratch up your instrument, don't scratch up your mounts in particular, and I'm actually gonna leave it to just air dry with the drones 
detached from their stalks so that moisture inside will have a chance to dry out. A special shout out to Ms. Carrie Tresek, my number one supporter on Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, go ahead, head over there. I'd love to have your help. So now we have the bag detached from everything. I'm currently playing a Lee and Sons goatskin bag with a zipper. But that said, I actually leave it zipped. Um, I find keeping a little bit of moisture in the bag doesn't seem to hurt anything. But if this was a Canmore or a Banneton or some sort of synthetic bag, I would absolutely unzip the bag and maybe even try to prop it open with something like a tennis ball or whatever. Something to keep it open, let the air get in there and let everything kind of dry out inside the bag. If you have a hide bag, it's your call on whether you think you need to dry it out or not. And I'm not that wet of a blower, as you can see. I wasn't getting moisture all everything. So do what works for you if you feel you need to dry it out, if you have a hide bag. And if you're concerned about germs, you might want to pick up a product like McLean's here or Sanitone, or there's a couple other ones on the market. I can't think of them right now, but any of these are great. If you wanted to make sure everything was dead, like inside this Reed Wrangler mouthpiece, you could give a spritz inside and just kind of get the whole thing a little bit, you know, damp with the McLean's here. It'll go a long way to keeping things from building up and getting nasty. Since I have it out, I'm going to go ahead and give it a spritz inside that blowpipe stock as well. Kind of rub it around, it'll evaporate quickly. It comes out in a pretty fine mist here, but this can go a long way to helping keep everything clean as well. Well, there you go, everybody. That's what I do at the end of my practice sessions to make sure that my pipes stay dry and clean and are ready to play the next time. If you enjoyed this video, check this video out right here where I talk about how you can really go in and clean your pipes or this video down here about oiling and preserving your pipes. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise, link in the description below. And if you want more personalized instruction, go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com. I'm Matt Willis, and until next time, cheers.